Testing, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, and everything else in between. Okay, this is your standard Moodle view. And a bit of background of why I created this user interface. I'm just getting a drop of wine. Had a heavy week at work. I'm completely shattered, so it's probably not the best time of the week to do this, but I don't have many time at the weekend. So I might as well just get stuck in and get it done. Right, this is your standard Modo modeling view. And of course Modo 10 I've got the procedural, so when I was clicking here it was starting to do my head in a little bit. So this is basically the background of why I created the core UI. This completely boiled my head for years. You can push it here and you can have everything as a pop-out. That is definitely a, an improvement. But I did see myself find myself looking and searching for different tools at different stages of the modeling process. And a lot of the stuff I'm doing is uh, modular environmental work and this is uh, just takes you out of your zone you, you, and in my opinion causes inaccuracy. Um, to explain that I would need about a half an hour which I'm not going to because this is an overview of the core UI so let's get stuck in. You see on the website how to add this so I'll not do it here and this is it, this is what you get. The reason it's called core is you've got your layouts, click away, and your tool, core tool set is right at the top. Simple. And I can do everything in this in the model view. I can bake model, UV, everything can be done here. Sometimes I like the bigger UV view port when I'm doing bigger models. It's just, it's just nicer. So that's why I've kept this in. It's more personal uh, option. Bake is a bit, uh, how would you say, it's, you could call it a copy of the, the new game layout for Modo, which I don't I don't really like at all. <clears throat> I was considering programming this to disappear and come back again where you could hide it and unhide it. But to actually create that is uh, a nightmare in Modo. It just is. You can copy you know the game tools and you, you see this you know items and shape. That that would have been nice but when you're working with Moodle UI tools, you know, form editors and creating new layouts, uh, you'll quickly realize that it gets very complicated really quickly. <laughs> and after a week or two weeks, I think most people give up. I decided not to give up. It took me, this took me at least two and a half months to get this to where it is today. I, if you remember on the forum post, I had all the tools around the side, around the top, around the sides and the bottom. It wasn't working out because of it. You could call it draw calls. So every time you have, this is the modeling tools, by the way, my shadow tools. <clears throat> if you've got tools open like this, a lot of them around your viewport, then you're getting, you could basically describe it as draw calls. The, the viewport starts getting jumpy shutter you when you're moving around and changing keys. Alt, Control, Shift, for instance. And it is there with this, when this is always open. But I, I don't need this always open, so I've just assigned a hotkey key to it, F1. Opens whenever I need it. So you've got uh, along the top here the usual suspects. 
any smaller. You've got uh, toggle. These are all toggle buttons. Verts, wireframe, shading options, wireframe, shade, advanced, click back shading. This sets your environment background. Whatever you want to set it to, you can do it here. So you don't have to keep going through to your environment. Click, click. You know what I mean? Saves clicks. It's just there. You do have to, you know, if you click out of that, if I go to base material, it's not selected. So that's why this is a big, big old button. Selects it for you. Topo mode and setup mode. And setup mode isn't active because uh, I've only got one mesh in. So if I actually, I'll just duplicate those, move it out of the way, set up, done. And you can use all the, the drop action functions, <coughs> which mostly, for me, is placing a line. That's the only drop action I use mat scale and stuff it's a bit hit and miss but it's there and it's a toggle and it works uh, so that's a uh, drop actions this is a uh, primitive tools self-explanatory they're all there in front of you so there's no right clicking to get other options it's all there and of course mesh edit duplicate tools all of them And deform tools, all of them. And last but not least, your commands EPV, Edge, Poly, Vertex. Here I've got uh, export functions, export operations. Export selected is the same as right, uh, right clicking your mesh. Export selected uh, exact, does the same thing gives you the option. Save scene is export as. This is from far further the script, which is very nice. Exports um, using your F FBX settings. That gives you a warning, of course. To any directory you wish. You can Add the directory to this command, sorry, <coughs> and it will um, simply export your FBX with its name, which is handy, to your directory of choice. This is a yeah, quick thing I find that I call it silent export. This uh, you need to change in the form menu there's no name it just gives you point fbx very handy for if you've got you know your game engine open and you're making changes to your model bacon uh, ue4 will re-import that once you export it so you don't have to keep clicking re-import every time and once you make changes to your mesh and you use this silent export which you go to the form editor this toolbar one Core top toolbar one, two, three, four, five, and six. And this is toolbar custom. So you can add your own plugins, whatever you want to this custom part. So that's why I've, I've left enough, enough space here <coughs> to enable you to do that. I'm going to have a little drink here. So that's one, two, we're on two bar, two bar, two. And I go down to my, you see these are all open, so it might be a confusion. You see you've got primitives, primitives, mesh edit. And if you right click on any of those, you can assign a key to it. And I've assigned F1 to my mesh edit because I don't want it open all the time. 
all duplicate tools, uh, that's the command, export options here. It's the last one, silent export. You see here, you just change the directory, you can add the folder name to here. So if you've got a, you know, a prototype folder, or it goes straight into your Unreal folder, every time you click that, make, make changes, it's going to export it silently. You won't even notice that it's, that it's doing that. So that's that. I think that's pretty pretty self-explanatory. Now I will move on to the... I bought a new keyboard, by the way, so I'm a bit freaking... My head's done in with a Windows button. I actually de deactivated it in the registry, so it's not, it does nothing when I hit it. But I've been using a Mac keyboard for the best part of four years for doing 3D art. And Control and, you know, Alt, those buttons are right together, so you're not you know, you don't have that space in between. So it's taken me uh, a while to get my head around that. Anyway, moving on. Lock. That locks your viewport. I'll turn the fixed off. So this is Modo's standard viewport. Which is nice, but I don't like working like that. I don't. I need accuracy, and I'm a real big. I'm a sucker when it comes to accuracy. I, the reason is I've done a lot of modular work. It looks great in Modo. Everything's lined up to the grid. You bring it into the game engine, and you put two pieces together, and there's a big dirty scene. Stuff like that. I want to avoid at the you know the modeling stage. I don't want. I don't want to be pissing around after I've made an asset, brought it in, it's textured, everything's ready, and then find out that it's, um, you know, that it's not modular. That's the only word for it, it's just not modular. If, there, if there's any gap at all, even if you can't see it in Modo, and, you look, and two, two parts are together, and you say, oh, that looks good. Wielded, unwielded, doesn't matter. They should snap to the grid in the game engine and uh, find out often enough that it doesn't happen that way when, especially when I'm using the, my grid like this my preferences are set up to game units yes I'm still using game units shoot me complain whatever you don't have to this is set up to work in any uh, metric system centimeters meters doesn't matter so the lock is my <laughs> favorite position, that it's right down at the bottom, it's locked at the bottom. And when I want to move it, I just toggle it. It's as simple as that. And there are times when you need to, you know, you want to pull something out here, add, 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 a, part of your, add a part of your mesh with the grid settings in the background so it is, you know having it locked all the time like this on the floor is not always preferable and the line, so if I select uh, oh, you'll see it in a second I select an edge a line the lines to that edge and you can still toggle through and reset so before I go into the grid tool I'm going to bevel that now you see the tool properties space they're gone let's say I want to bevel these edges bevel tool properties so you'll start out like this you'll see nothing Spacebar, bevel, nothing. You see in the tool pipe, you'll see something's active, but there's no properties. K on your keyboard, move it to where you want, and pin it. That's it. Done. Spacebar, drop tool, and it goes away. So your tool properties only pop up when you need them. And if you want to know where they are, you hit X, turn on snapping. There you go. 
So X will show you where exactly where your two properties are. So you're not looking for them, but you, I'm, I'm telling you, after a week of using this, you'll have difficulties going back to the box standard Moodle UI, guaranteed. Because like, there's no way I'm going back after using this. And that yeah, it sounds like I'm boasting and I'm making it out, you know, that it's, that it's wonderful. It's just, I spent time on this, put a lot of thought into it. The first, uh, as you see in the form, Moodle Forms was a mess because of the viewport um, problems. D you draw calls or whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> so I had to rethink the whole uh, tool, toolbar method. And this way gives me basically the same, you know, there's no jumpiness there at all. Gives me the same FPS as what I've got here. There's no difference here. Only you can see immediately there's loads of more space to work in. I don't have um, tabs here. You don't have to go tabs to looking for anything. And the important thing, um, you know, options for game art are in front of in front of your nose. Properties always melt in my head. <coughs> Sorry. Clicking through properties, it's Jesus. And here, you're clicking everywhere, looking for things. You cannot get into a zone like that. You can't focus on, on, on work properly, in my opinion. That's my, that's my brain. My brain can't focus like that. I get distracted by doing this shit, looking for stuff. So I spent time, I'm actually thinking thinking this through. This isn't just something that just stuck together and said, oh, no, we'll do it like that and we'll do it like that. So you pull down if you're, you know, if you're working in large uh, groups, just like in the, the, the original movie, you know, you can, it's flexible. It's like just elastic band and that goes through to your UVs. It's not in big export because I've, an, I've just got it fixed here. Script out of the rail and procedural you know what I mean, so it's there and you can adjust it accordingly I've just got those down in the bottom, so I really need this commands, click on it, add command pull it up to see what you're looking at regarding commands and this could actually be better, you know this type of layer option it, it it could be rethought but that's the foundry's uh, problem i i can't there's no possibility of changing this it is what it is so that's the lock toggle align you don't have to line there you can line to anything toggle toggle the uh, alignment reset and now the grid tool. So this is grid tools now off. I'll explain this a little bit later. I'm not going to explain everything in detail now. I'm going to make another video that goes into a bit more detail about this. This will help people who are having trouble with snapping in Moodle. If you've got fixed grid on in Moodle, <coughs> you don't need snapping. And this may be a bold statement, but you don't. If you're working on uh, especially modular stuff and power of two, this is perfect. You don't need snapping at all. I've got uh, it's off now, so I can move these. They are snapping to grid, and whatever grid size I make, it is a form of snapping. So that's one thing people need to get uh, your head around. If you're using a fixed grid, you are actually forcing Modo to snap, which for yeah for some things it's uh, a hustle for game design it's it's pretty darn useful. Uh, you can increase the grid to whatever you want. You know, I'm up to 128. It's just in the power of two. And this works the same with centimeters and meters. There's no difference. If you want to hide the grid, fix on and off. Uh, fix on and off is uh, there for uh, smaller adjustments. And these are here to help you move if you're, let's say, Let's say you're working on a big grid and you don't and you want to move this into this corner. I'll do this quickly. You can't because you snapped the grid, so we'll turn the fixed where is it? Where is the corner? 
trying to fix it off. So I want this corner in here. How do we do that? You can decrease it. Can you remember where it is? Yeah, it's roughly here. Or if I turn a snapping on, this is how the snapping works hand in hand with this. And vert, which is actually in global mode. Yep, and I click the transform key. And it's not actually going to hold on a second. Now it won't let me snap to the vert. <laughs> this is typical modal. <laughs> See if I decrease it. No, it just won't let me snap to that third. And it was a minute ago. Turn the grid off because I don't want to snap the grid. There it is. There's still some dodgy, spooky things happening in a distance here. No, I don't want you to do that. You can actually turn, best is to turn the fixed grid off, so that's our original grid setting. I'll turn the snapping off and I'll just start again. Turn the fixed grid off if you want to snap divert. And it's still not something. For it. Ah, because I haven't got snapping on. See, <coughs> that's my dumb head. <laughs> it helps if you have snapping on. So we'll start again. Roll back. I want this corner here. I'm tired, guys. Give me a bloody chance. <laughs> I want this corner here. So in this uh, setup with the fixed grid on, it's impossible, as you've just noticed. So if I turn snapping on and transform, it's it's still not. This is unbelievable. This was happening, working perfectly. Maybe I need to just zoom in more. Probably the answer. Yeah, zoom in. But it was working really nicely earlier. To zoom in to get that uh, vert, and we'll, let's move that. It's not snapping the grid, so click the grid on. There it goes. It'll snap everywhere on each corner. Again, this is on grid side, so if I decrease that. Still using the fixed grid as your snapping options. This is with snapping on. <laughs> it's an awful lot of snapping. <clears throat> so you can see this. It does have its use, uses. This. This is why I've added this. You know, it gives you control over it, over the snapping. But again, I'm not going. To go because this will drag on for hours. I can sit here all night and talk like this. I'm not going to get into depth about this, but apart from this, the snapping. So you've seen it, it can be in complete hours with the grid on, with the grid off. It shoots snap. See, no, it's working. No, it's not. If I zoom in, which is not even snapping to the thirds. Ah, I think I've got the. I think I just re realized what the problem is. I think I have to have verts on selected. Let's see if that helps. No. <coughs> Same shit. So it is right bang on the middle of. on the center of that vert. I'll try here. 
here too. So I think it's just a question of moving in closer. And it is to do with the fixed. If you turn the fixed off, it definitely snaps to vert, but you have to sit, be in vert mode. So it is a bit strict. But you want, and you snap to a vert, you definitely, if you're doing modular work, you want to be sure that you're bang on that vert. Yeah? Or else there's, there's no point. So now we're just snapped to the grid size. See, that ferret is always going to snap to that grid. No matter, no matter where it is. And of course it's going to take you a while to get your head around this. You're not going to jump on here and go, whoa, this is way better, Pete. You have to work with this. This is a new way of using Modo. So that covers the snapping part. It's not perfect, but it's uh, you'll get used to it. Uh, so that's uh, the grid tools. And I'll just center that. I've added a uh, grand Yalal's uh, script. So whatever vert you select, Grand mesh, it'll grind it to wherever your vert is selected to. Action centers, symmetry, fall offs, select through, snaps and precision, background constraints, UV tools, completely new. Same commands, only with a visual representation of the commands, which I personally like. You know, I like working like this because this goes through. Remember this: these tools go through everything, all layouts. They're there with you. You you don't have to go to model. You don't need popouts. You don't need. Um, you know, new windows for tools, they're all there. So that's uh, UV tools. Uh, I'll go through these later in a more detailed video. Weight tool, simple weight tool. Script box, this, these scripts I've added via the script edit. Really simple way to work with. It might be a bit daunting if you've never used the form view, but it is actually quite simple to work with once you have used it a couple of times. I set these up, uh, I'll show you. Script box is part of toolbar 5, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So every, any changes you make here in script box will always be on this, on, on the view, on your main toolbar. So if you add new scripts here, I've just added a, a few to get you started. Uh, scale references that quick note on this is that it's massive right now compared to that cube but this is a UE4 skill which you do if you're doing any sort of environmental work you need a human skill for door res and stuff but you get this uh, material which actually messes up your tool properties so I said to suggest you delete it I think I've added that yeah, make sure to delete the material reference in the shader tree. <clears throat> so, there you go. Quick pipe, perfect circle, poly circle, work on hand, quad cups, caps, hole puncher, exclude path, Sanka's sand, uh, script. Quick pipe as well, create circle is, uh, you know, you pick three verts. Great circle. How many sides do I want? Uh, 24. Done. Perfect circle around those uh, edges. And the scale reference we've just seen, and the rest is for you. Whatever you want. If you make a, a macro, you can add them here too. 
there's no problem. Now you can get rid of what you don't use. The uh, thing is about the whole setup with the toolbars is you can delete. You know, there's a lot of things I'm going to delete here. I'm not going to be using like these, uh, you know, the hotkeys that I already know. I'm not going to have here sitting as a symbol. I won't move T. I already know that. But I've just added this for um, starters, so you can get your bar bearings here. That selects a boundary around poly. This is invert selection. Very handy for hiding stuff. Isolating. Dimensions. Selection sets. These, uh, you know, duplicate instance items I rarely use, so they'll be going. And, of course, sets the center. That's your pivot point now. And it's set to anything, an edge, useful. And especially if you're exporting to the game engine, so you can use, you can send, you know, center your pivot to a vert. And that will not transform in the game engine because there's a problem with Moto's FBX. Uh, pivot uh, again. You know this has been a yo-yo. I can't. I just don't understand why they can't get this fucking right. It's a yo-yo. It works one version, and the next version it's broken, and then it works again, and then it's broken again. You know, you add the bloody center pivot, and it should be there when you export it to you know the game engine. With all this work that's been done uh, uh, behind the scenes for Modu 10. I just can't fathom what the hell went wrong with this this time, you know. <clears throat> and it's the same with updates. Updates break things and, and I just don't understand it. Especially when you've got people uh, who are using game tools and know their shit working now for the foundry. This is, I don't think, it's unexcusable in my opinion. You've got a script that I showed you here, export FBX, that's from far further. This works. So if you select your pivot and you export with this, your pivot's <laughs> there in UE4, it does center the pivot to the, you know, UE4 grid, but that's, you know, it's not a problem. For me anyway. Because that's what I want, I'm setting the pivot to a place, instead of, you know, moving the mesh to that origin where the pivot is in the center, I just set it here, where I want it to be, boom, done, export it, and we're uh, finished, you know, saves a lot of pissing around. Um, so that's mesh edit, you remove those bool, bool tools, I'll go through those in depth later, they're very handy, and zoom in, aligns your model to the area that you're working on. And you've noticed it gets jumpy when you're using the grid tool with fixed on. And now the zoom and the mouse, your mouse zoom is smooth. So you can keep that in mind too. <coughs> it's just, again, mesh cleanup. It's a new way of working. You're going to have to get used to it. You don't have to, you know, you're not, uh, I'm not forcing you to use this. So we've got UV tools, weight tools, the script box, um, color mesh, just basically. I can select any polys and color them immediately, and I'm done. If I don't like this color, the select whatever color you want and randomize it. The drawback with this is uh, it's still showing red, and now it's purple. But for me. I'm not doing uh, really complex scenes, and I don't advise if you're doing complex environment environmental scenes, you're building them, which I do see people doing. You're building your complete scene inside Modo and trying to export it into e e4 or UE4, uh, EE4. It's yeah, you're asking for trouble. That's all I'm going to say on the matter. Modular is the best way to go. Smaller segments enable. It may be boring. It might not be the most uh, attractive thing you're doing, unless you're doing it for a portfolio. You can do whatever the hell you like. You can build everything inside Modo. 
but if it's actual for practical work and work experience on the game engine I don't recommend building your complete level inside Modo and trying to export it out it's, it's nonsense You're, you'll be plagued with problems and you'll regret it Firefire there's a normal tool kit that's actually a part of Modo now paint tools, sculpt tools and fusion tools presets toggle render again toggle render and render window here we've got your normal item list shader tree and vertex map list this is the way it should be for a game artist these should be visible open all the time and statistics there's no doubt about it these you know this this way of working is just it's all in front of you preferences again it's all in front of you mesh just to click away and you don't have to look through them you just you pick what you want and if you're going into detail pull it out work with it and then get rid of it Here's uh, the baking tool I've made, there's a few scripts in here and this is uh, really, in the next video I'll show you how quickly how to use this Game Art Set just adds all the most uh, popular shading outputs or you can add them individually and Curvature is the last one you want to use uh, that's render, if you're looking in the render, the render view effect doesn't work here, it works in the bake export as you see they're now active render bake you've got your render map size for your render outputs this adds a normal map to your selected material which should be your low poly Cage adds a cage morph to your low poly, and of course, cage edit until these pop up here. Padding, UV padding, bake all your maps for each of the engines. It bakes first the, the render outputs, so you, it will ask you do you want to use a cage? But again, I'll show you this in the next video. Or you can bake normals only and folks that's basically it I can't uh, there's nothing really I need to explain here apart from maybe um, you can you know increase every window you can just hit not zero and you're there and you've still got your tools here this is a whole idea with core that your tools stay with you all the time no matter what window you're working in they're there and this uh, redraw issue I've not, I don't have a problem with no, loads of people have an issue with this I don't it's, it's, yeah. it's just the way Modo is mm. procedural, procedural can be is, it's nicely spaced out as you can see so you don't have the what they've got in the model view clicking there's no clicking to change, to look, you know, to look, you're not looking for anything, it's there in front of you. <laughs> you know what I mean? All the, the actual um, viewports that you need for procedural mesh work are in front of you. And you can also use this for fusion. So you've got your fusion tools, best of both worlds in one simple viewport. I'll be back with uh, a more detailed look into the bull tools which are from Yelaz, these are hardcore hard scripts, they're just bulletproof and a few extra of my own that I've added in there for doing some hard surface stuff, makes life a lot easier and I'll do a bake, quick bake, show you a quick this is all from one screen. That's it folks Thanks for watching, and I hope you. I hope you can get some use out of Core UI. I definitely, I'm enjoying it. So.
Cheers. Good luck.